Just a quick announcement before today's show that November is Investor Month. For the entire month of November, we will be featuring 12 cannabis investors. So if you're a cannabis company that's raising capital or an accredited investor that's looking for a firm to manage your cannabis investments, make sure to listen to Raising Cannabis Capital in November and get ready for 12 cannabis investor episodes. In this case, though, it'd be like taking that model and saying, hey, we want to do a McDonald's in Illinois, and we want to do one in Michigan. But here's the caveat. In Illinois, and in Michigan for that matter, all the cows, they have to be from Illinois. And not only do they have to be from Illinois, they have to be born in Illinois, and they have to be consumed in Illinois. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how this company has figured out a way to legally expand their successful cannabis brand nationally. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we're joined by John Cushman from Clear Cannabis. John, welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me. Well, for most of us, when we hear the clear, we think of concentrates and dabbing products and the proprietary technology that your chemists and your scientists have developed over the years makes the clear one of the most well-known brands. But I don't think people probably realize that it just didn't happen overnight. I mean, this is like a, I mean, what, seven years or more that you guys have been refining the process, creating better brands and expanding the brand. So I, I, I think maybe we should start there. For people that know the clear but don't know the whole story, can you just give us a quick snapshot of where you are with the clear and how you got there? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a distillate product, and it's been around for officially seven or so years, created by Chris Barone in Long Beach, California. Really, you know, Chris was the pioneer of distillate. He's a chemist. He figured out how to take the pieces of the plant that he wanted, in this case, the THC, and remove all the lipids, all the fats, all the other cannabinoids into a pure and clear THC product. Throughout that process, he also had some proprietary flavors that he came up with to add back in. And, you know, at the end of the day, what the clear gives the community is a consistent product that is the same regardless of where you are and when you enjoy it. And I think the, the name clear really defines the product because it's so pure that you can add the flavoring and there's no distractions from any impurities. Absolutely, absolutely. You see many products out there that are not clear. We take pride in giving a pure product, thus the name again, as you said, it's clear. And, you know, we add flavors and then some are just straight distillate, which is equally as enjoyable. Did I read that the flavors that you add, you guys produce yourself? It's not like you get them from a third party. It's it's all taken care of in-house. Yeah, we blend those with various compounds, terpenes, and, and then push back into the distillate for the... Uh, 17 flavors that we have. Wow. That's really the key right there. But we're going to jump ahead here, but I'm going to circle back. Sure. Cannabis laws, they create all these challenges, but they also create opportunities. And, you know, one of the biggest challenges that all, we all know about is crossing state lines. And you guys have identified an opportunity here and you figured out a way to a national brand without violating any of the cannabis laws. And it's really where I want to dive into today. And that's Clear Cannabis Inc. It's a separate non-plant touching entity. You're able to license your proprietary technology and and all the non-cannabis products that you already created. Maybe give everybody a more detail how this plan works. Sure, absolutely. A quick history, right? If we were any other product non-cannabis, you would make a great product and you would institute a supply chain and we're in Denver and then you would ship your product to every state in the union right out of Colorado. We've all been to a McDonald's. We know this story. Everything tastes the same everywhere you go and the consistency. Now, that's a great model, and clearly that works. In this case, though, it'd be like taking that model and saying, hey, we want to do a McDonald's in Illinois, and we want to do one in Michigan. But here's the caveat. In Illinois, and in Michigan for that matter, all the cows, they have to be from Illinois. <laughs> and not only do they have to be from Illinois, they have to be born in Illinois, and they have to be consumed in Illinois. Because of the laws in the various states, we have come up with an equation in which we will go to the different markets. So let's say we'll go to Nevada or Michigan, 
and we will partner up with a entity in those areas, and then we will license the IP of the clear product to them uh -huh. and help them on all the phases of manufacturing and sales and all the kind of, I call it business 101 functions. It allows us to A, create a top shelf brand in the clear, and it also allows us to distribute that in non conventional methods through our kind of partner network. At the end of the day, it allows the consumer to have a consistent product in any market that recreational cannabis is legal. I want to take a quick break to thank you for listening to today's show. As the leading cannabis podcast network, we're constantly adding new cannabis podcasts to support our industry's growth. And that's why we're so excited to announce our newest podcast, The Cannabis Breakout, which premieres October 25th. The show is about the thousands of Americans who remain in prison for violating cannabis laws that have long since been overturned. The Cannabis Breakout gives cannabis political prisoners a voice. If you're a former cannabis prisoner or have a loved one who is a cannabis prisoner, we want to share your story. Please go to mjbulls.com and sign up to be a guest. Now, you talk about your partner network, and let's, let's go a little deeper into that. Sure. In some cases, they're partners, but also I know you're interested in maybe doing some acquisitions if somebody's got a really established footprint and wants to be maybe rolled up into your brand. Yeah, absolutely. So we have an active M&A strategy. When we talk M&A, you would look at Clear Cannabis Inc. as a distribution company with a distribution platform in cannabis. You know, someone might have a uh, edible line, right? Um, and they may be in only one state with no avenue to grow or no avenue to distribute or to go further into the other legal states. That would be something where we could come in and, you know, everything aligned, we could roll them up into our network. And whether it would be under the clear name or their own name, there's numerous different ways that it could be done. But the point being that using our platform and our partner networks, we would be able to help really launch that brand and put it in the areas that we already are with the clear. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because, like you said, each state is sort of a micro market right now. And some of, these, some of these brands have established trust within the community. And if you want to roll up into your brand, it makes a lot of sense. I think being in Colorado, that helps us. You know, as you know, we were one of the first and we've made some mistakes along the way as a state. But at the end of the day, we've done a lot of things right. I think having a Colorado base definitely brings some legitimacy to what we're doing. And people can trust that, well, you know, Colorado's been doing a little while. Uh, we're just coming online. Let's look to them. Let's see if they can help. And so I think at the end of the day, that's another good selling point to not only the clear product, but to our platform and our strategy. Yeah, I mean, the experience, you can't beat it. And you have a great product. You've established a great team. You have distribution already. And you've been doing this for a over seven years now. So now's the time. Your national it makes sense. It makes sense. This is a super expensive proposition, what you're about to do. <laughs> Going national, rolling up the rest of the country, super expensive. What's the plan for funding it? Great question. Yes. It does take a little bit of cash. We're raising money right now very successfully to really create a bigger footprint. We have a great team. We say we got the tools, the processes, and more important, the people. Obviously, we've talked about we have the product. So yeah, we're raising money, like I said, successfully, and there's still some positions there. Like I say, it's not fully subscribed. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting here counting all the opportunities that I've heard just in this interview. I mean, for one, <laughs> exactly, really, I mean, sit, sit, I'm sitting in a new state. Let's just say this state comes on. I have, right. the opportunity is I can partner up with you. I could be acquired by you, or I could invest in your company. This is one of those shows where just about everybody that listens to this show may be able to participate in this opportunity. You know, those are three great areas. It kind of changes the whole vertically integrated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a different way. Maybe. But it, you nailed it. That's the definition of a good partnership. You bring the things you do well and you partner up with people that do their things well. So that's what we try to do. And, you know, there's a lot of people getting into the business as we move east. They're very well capitalized, but they don't know a thing about cannabis. You know, mm -hmm. they, they know that the opportunity is there and they may have manufacturing experience, but never in cannabis or in products. Or they may have ag experience, but not in products. Those are the kind of partnerships that we're finding. And they're just great because, like I say, people bring their expertise. We bring ours and we move forward and go get the next one. It's really exciting for us right now. Cannabis sweat equity is one of the most valuable. <laughs> it's one of the most valuable commodities out there right now. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it is. Well, we've been speaking with John Cushman from Clear Cannabis, and I'll have all his contact information and investor information on the MJ Bulls website. John, this has been great. Thanks a lot for being on the show. Hey, it was a pleasure. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thanks for listening to Raising Cannabis Capital. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by MJ Bulls Media, with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast. <laughs>